Hello! Right before I started recording this video, I realized that I am three pages away from finishing The Angel Professor Volume 1. This is gonna be a rambling type video because I haven't really made one of those in a long time and I don't know, maybe I just enjoy making content and sometimes it's kind of fun to take a break from drawing. I just finished sketching a page and now I'm just gonna record my voice over some of the processes. But yeah, I am literally three pages away from a new milestone. I've never actually finished any of my comics before, not like a first book of any of them. Like I've come close with Sunstrike and Bloomist, at least in an earlier version of it from my teens, but I still never actually finished it because before I did, I ended up rewriting it and doing it digitally for the internet. So this is a big deal for me and really makes me think just about this story as a whole or even just this volume as a whole like what was I thinking when I started it and what am I thinking now how much has changed and yeah like why does this exist what's the purpose of it like what were my intentions for this thing I think it's good to think about this or talk about it just because stories are so involved and so complex that sometimes we actually lose sight of why we were making it in the first place and also sometimes the reason we're making it in the first place completely changes during the process. So like, if I think really hard, my memory isn't great, but I think when I first started uh, developing the Angel Professor seriously, I think I was thinking a lot about um, just the supernatural in general and uh, cool ideas about how angels might work. I also just kind of wanted to dabble in the dark fantasy genre, which is Probably my second favorite genre next to like science fiction or superheroes or like I don't know shonen kind of stuff. Okay dark fantasy often falls into the shonen category so maybe I've got my genres all mixed up but I think when I started doing this I was really into Tower of God and Kubera and like man I really need to get back into those first of all. Uh, especially Tower of God since season 2 is coming out in the summer and you know I'll be there for that. But these aren't really based off those things so much as like the vibe from those things I wanted to apply to this. Like I feel like Tower of God and Kubera in particular, like there are some uh, stories that I've read that are similar, sort of like a Hunter x Hunter, but I feel like these are simultaneously dark but also soft and beautiful. Does that make any sense? Even down to the way the characters are drawn, like um, I think Hunter x Hunter is uh, somewhat similar to Tower of God in just the way the story is told, but it's obviously like drawn to be more edgy and more cool, whereas Tower of God is very soft and beautiful, like it's so gorgeous and it feels more, I don't know, maybe like the dark stuff goes down maybe a bit more gently instead of just punching you in the face, you know? But that's the vibe I wanted for this story. It's very bleak, but it's beautiful, like with them. Um, even the scary stuff is beautiful, like the fire or the angels, like they're scary, but they're also beautiful, or that's at least what I was going for. But the vibe is also definitely based on dreams that I had. Again, if you go back to the uh, introduction I wrote for The Ancient Professor Volume 1, you will read some of the inspiration, like uh, that walk I had with my brother and uh, yeah, the dream. But then of course a huge inspiration for the story or a huge reason why I started telling it, or maybe more accurately I should say the story started telling it itself and then I kind of ran right into it and freaked out because I realized that the story was about me even though I didn't know it was going to be, but I guess that should be a given by now, like I should be prepared for this sort of stuff to happen, but you know. I'm reviewing each of these recordings after I record them just in case there are any like huge mistakes and like wow that last recording was hard to understand. Gosh, it's a good thing this is a different kind of video because I'm like it's a ramble video because wow. <laughs> I can't be perfect or super clean and tidy all the time, okay? Like I think it's okay if I sometimes make a video that's clumsy on purpose because I'm just chilling while making it. But yeah, the more difficult inspiration for this story, aside from just uh, everything that happened in my life after I started making it, is the premise or the theme and the backstory. Ah, what am I saying? Okay, I mean the theme of abuse that happened in 
uh, Jones passed and of course that stemming from some abuse that happened in my own life or a lot of it I should say. I think that's part of the reason why this story exists is because I thought maybe it could help me make more sense of what happened to me or learn something good from it hopefully more than just yeah sometimes things really suck for no reason. But maybe a bit surprisingly, even though Joan's experiences are a little bit like mine or like inspired by it, and which is a bit of a stretch because it's more like how you feel afterwards that's really a lot like uh, my experience because I don't have experience with all the things that she does because they have to fit into the context of the story and this story involves angels and demons so it's a lot more specific and a little less relatable although there are a few people who could relate to it, I'm sure. But personality-wise, I don't think I'm very much like Joan, so I don't think the character is really based on me, just some of her experiences are inspired by some of my own. Um, I think the character Jakob is actually a lot more like me, except I like to think I'm a lot nicer and more funny, but uh, hmm, here's a way of putting it. In my other comic, Sunstrike and Blue Mist, uh, the character Cat slash Sunstrike actually is supposed to be me, or she is supposed to be based off me. Me, but better. But the older I get, and the more stuff I go through, the more I'm thinking like, wow, Cat is a lot better than me. <laughs> and the more I look at Jakob and think, no, that's more like me, even though he's really mean. Um, yeah, but Sunstrike is still where my heart is at, or at least my intentions, I think. I just, maybe I behave a little more like Jakob, unfortunately. Sunstrike is also supposed to be a Christ figure though, so like of course she's gonna be better. I say Jakob is mean, but maybe bitter is more the appropriate word. Definitely a very cynical take on an angel, but hey, at least he's not like the bad guy like in a lot of other media. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't be patting myself on the back for that. But I was recently rereading the entire thing, or at least all of the pages that I have made so far, which I think is a really good thing to do if you're making a story because it helps you to spot potential continuity errors and also keep track of everything. And uh, if you've come a long way, like for example, I'm almost finished it right now, uh, you've probably learned a lot and you can go back to the very beginning. And well, when I did that, I noticed, uh-oh, there's a little bit of shameless exposition here, like through dialogue, and I'm kind of like, eh, that that could have been better, but at the ver at least it's really brief, so it's a big improvement from uh, some of the early exposition in Sunstrike and Bloomers. Like that was just awful, <laughs> I know. And that was five years, uh, six years ago now. So please forgive me, but but not all the exposition was bad in the Angel Professor, at least from my standpoint currently. Uh, I like how a lot of it is really gradual and natural, but it's almost like super gradual and super natural to the, to the point where we actually don't know very much at all at the beginning. We like have to put the pieces together ourselves, so I'm not sure if I make the audience work a little too hard, but at least I'm making them work like I'm not like force feeding them like, yeah, you see this character? He's this. You like him? You like him? You hate him? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Another thing, or a few like little dumb things I noticed that aren't like really a big deal, but I just noticed were like, um, when did I start rolling up Joan's sleeves? I don't remember. I think they were always kind of like half sleeves, except for on the cover where she's holding the scepter, but like, I'm looking at like this, even this time lapse right now, and her sleeves aren't rolled up, they're just like shorter. But now, or for the past while, I've been drawing where like, I think they're long sleeves, but they're rolled up, so like, at some point I lost track of it or, or had a change of heart about what kind of shirt she was wearing. I do remember what happened with her glasses though. So at the beginning her glasses are like narrower frame wise. Um, that's because I was directly referencing my own glasses and at the time I, would, I had a different pair that was uh, slightly more narrow and rectangular. But then later I switched to some that were a bit bigger and a little bit more rounder. So. For simplicity's sake, since I wear glasses, and if I want to reference them, I just take mine off that I'm currently wearing and look at them from different angles. It just like speeds things up so much. So like when I switch glasses, Joan's glasses magically have to switch too, okay? Like I don't make the rules. I just realized a stupid reason or a stupid way I could make this canon, like maybe from being in the spiritual realm for an extended period of time and getting poisoned, maybe that like warped her frames somewhat. Guys, I love this. This should be canon. 
what are some other things I noticed? Um, I don't know, other things writing-wise. I don't mean to, like, I don't know, make myself sound really great or whatever, but I think it's, it's, I don't think it's bad to look back at what you did and think, like, oh yeah, I didn't really think about that, or I forgot what I was thinking at the time, but looking back at it, I'm like, that actually worked pretty well. I'm glad I tried that. I'm glad I experimented, because now as a whole, you know, as it's coming together, I'm like, yeah, I really like this piece a lot. I do. One of the things I really liked was, um, of course, the uh, sort of angsty relationship that uh, Jakob and Elias have. And when I say relationship, I mean like they're sort of former comrades, brothers, really close, like angel family ties. They're not like biological, but I don't know, they're cool. I like playing around with them. I like how genuinely painfully this plays out for Jakob, also Elias. Um, I think more for Elias later on, because he's... I still think he's not like fully aware, like he still is hanging on to this delusion that he can get Jakob back. Um, I also really like my depiction of the devil. I don't know, I, I always find depictions of the devil interesting, like in any media I'm curious how they're gonna do it and each one plays it a little differently. Like for, I know a couple of random examples, in uh, Constantine the devil is in one scene but he's like so cool that you're like locked on to him the entire scene because you just want to see what he does next. He's, he's so creepy and so impactful. And then on the Cuphead show, he's like this cartoonish caricature of the devil, but he's still like scary enough so that you do take him seriously to a certain extent, even though you know he's ultimately going to fail because he's the devil. <laughs> he's, he's a bad guy. He's going to lose. I don't know if my version of the devil is something special or not. I think it's at least a little different than any version that I've seen, but... I know there are more versions that I haven't seen, so I should be careful what I say. I mean, first off, he's more human looking than definitely like the Cuphead Show's Devil or some other versions of the Devil. I guess what I like about him is it's really fun to write someone who's just like a totally unhinged slime bag. Like, it's fun, you don't have as many boundaries as you would writing uh, more realistic uh, villains, like people who are, you know, less evil. But I think his behavior and actions are nuanced and mysterious enough so that you know there's a little bit more to him than just that and you want to know what. Like, there are a couple moments where he like hesitates or makes this expression and where I don't know exactly what the audience is thinking, but it's intended to be like, oh, what was that? Like, what did that mean? Like, what is he thinking, you know? So, and you know, it's something important. And yeah, obviously I'm not gonna tell you right now, but I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you guys enjoy him as much as I am enjoying writing him. So I know that when I was starting the story, it kind of seemed to be about, um, other than just supernatural stuff, I think the theme did have to do with healing, healing from past trauma and abuse. And that's still a part of the story. That's still a very strong element in the story. Like, Margaret's a healer, and that's important. Like, will she be able to heal Jakob? Will she be able to heal Joan? Um, it's, I don't think it's gonna be that simple, but uh, that's part of the reason why she's here, right? Not, and of course, there's this entire city, like, this city that's just completely broken and messed up, and an angel and a human who are also, like, almost as messed up. But if you take that a bit deeper, it's about hope, like hope for a future. And on the flip side of that, uh, the darker side of that coin is uh, just despair and depression, right? Uh, just the feeling of giving up. Now, I, I'm going to be careful how much I talk about that here just because of how heavy the subject is. But that subject is going to be a lot more important to the story than I initially thought it was because it's something that unfortunately I have been struggling with uh, for a very long time since I was a teen but it still really hasn't gone away. I think I've been working on uh, just managing life as an adult really on my own for the first time uh, in the past two years that I have been making this comic and a lot of that struggle just comes through into the story. I think while I have grown a lot, um, I'm definitely not on the other side yet. So, I mean, one thing, just basic, one basic thing this story is good for is reminding me, like, hey, yeah, there is hope. Like, you'd have to be a bloody hypocrite to be writing this story 
and believe it at all or see any of it as true if you don't also apply that to your life. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah, stories, you might just say, oh, they're just stories. They're not true, but I think almost any good story has truth to it. So I can't really ignore that. I can't like be all like, oh, it's all pretend. It's all fun and games. Like, no, there does have to be light that exists with dark, like both are real. You can't ignore either one of them. Another thing that also ties in with this theme, surprisingly, is uh, what it means to be a father. And I know that sounds unrelated and it hasn't really come up in the story yet, so it might seem a bit random, but how do you, how does a father take care of someone or how do you be a good father in certain situations, in like really dark and desperate situations? And I think a father would have to make some very difficult choices. Now you might be wondering who the father is. Well, that's a little bit complicated. I think there are two characters in particular who represent fathers in some form or another, not necessarily literally, but uh, I do find it to be a really beautiful uh, type of relationship and role to explore. And it just seems really relevant to the story, even though I wasn't initially thinking that was going to be a super strong element. But it definitely is now, and I'm so looking forward to showing that, because that's got to be one of the harder punching, uh, heartfelt issues I've ever dealt with. Like, I think um, in Sunstrike and Bloomus, the issues are more like morally complex and less of a relational kind of thing. There definitely is the strong brother-sister uh, relationships in that story, but this one's just a little bit different and I love just the primal uh, nature of it. it. It's hard to explain. It's I, it, I really just want to show you guys and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. Hopefully that wasn't just a pointless ramble and actually did give you some insight into just the thought processes in making the story and why it exists and just, yeah, how far it's come. Thank you so much for being here with me on this journey. Talk to you later.